Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. Today I'm going to paint the picture that's inside this wonderful box clock. Now this is a, a real quality item. So you can buy the clock, including the paper, from the SAA. There also there's a palette with the um, clock mechanisms and a, a acrylic board. So there's three different types, but this one I think is the really high end. Saunders Waterford is the paper, the watercolour paper that's included. And you get everything, clock, mechanism. The only thing you don't get is a battery. So I've put this together and what I'll do today is I'll paint the picture. And this is a picture I'm surprised I haven't painted before because this is my cat. And I noticed on the introduction, Gary said a cat. No, this isn't a cat, this is my cat, and she is beautiful. So that is what I'm going to do. I don't know, Gary might move this because I don't know if it's going to tip off. No, nope, oh, that's fine. That's safe. Now, I wouldn't normally um, take down the picture because even though you do have a little bit of um, overlap f to allow for the mount, I prefer to go to the edges, but Gary's taped it down because he likes to keep things stationary so he can focus when he's filming. The hole already created, because it's actually assembled when you get it, including the fittings and fixtures on the back. Um, you just disassemble and there are instructions. So I'm going to paint the cat. So originally, this was the image I had and I've just blown it close up. Actually, Gary did it for me because I spent hours trying to do it on the photo editing I did and he took two minutes to do it. And, and then went really close up to the size of the painting um, and that just gives me more detail. I might have got over, a little overwhelmed with the amount of detail because of the first, so it's a balance between adding detail and keeping it loose. So this is my cat, she's fabulous. She's a completely ginger girl, which is unusual. Um, but not just a cat, she's my cat. She's, like I say, I'm surprised I haven't painted her many, 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 many times before. And you've swizzled her around a bit. Oh yeah. Um, she, in this picture, she's got her head tilted on her back. But when we put it in the frame, it didn't look right if she was up this way. So actually, it's ended up being tilted to look at that in the picture. It looks much better. We, I did look at it the other way, it just didn't look right. So again, you just adapt and you can get things to work for you. So sketch down the key features, the eyes, the nose. They're going to be the most detailed. The rest of it, because she's ginger, the colours are really easy to do. Now I'm using the SAA half pans, which come in a tin. Now this is my normal set, the set of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14. Um, but I've got the whole range, so I need two pans for this. And actually I may use the black from this set. I don't normally use it, but to get that really strong black I was looking for in the eye, I find it is useful. Um, and the white, I don't didn't find was as opaque as I wanted it to be. It's maybe because the paper was still very damp when I was using it, but I have plenty of other alternatives to white, so we'll see which works best, because there's lots of ways to keep white on your paper. I could use masking fluid, but I'm going to add it on at the end. Also, really excited to be able to use the SAA imitation sable brushes. Now, these are a synthetic brush, but they imitate that wonderful quality of sable, that lovely water holding power and that softness of the brush. I think these have a little bit more spring than a lot of the sable, which I find are a bit too floppy or too soft. Um, but this keeps a wonderful point, but has that wonderful holding quality that you look for in sable. So completely synthetic, no natural hair. Okay, the size 10 a great all-round brush and I'm just going to whack some 
I can't tell the colours on this, so it's either the, a, I think it's a, going to be a raw sienna or ochre, it's yellow ochre, that's a yellow ochre. I'm just going to whack it very wet onto the page, just as my grounding point. Just put it on, push it around. So I know these brushes are designed for this very wet work. I'm not adding any more colour. I'm just going to move the colour I have. Because even though she's all ginger, sometimes her chin and her muzzle look light, especially in photographs. Because I had to check it when I was painting her another time. Because she looked like she had a white um, chin, but she hasn't. She is completely ginger. I know this is unusual for um, ginger cats to be female. I think it's about 80% are male and 20% are female. But she's completely female. Even though when I was looking for a cat, I wanted a boy cat because girl cats, they have a lot of... I'm not had trouble with them, but they just seem to be less laid back than boy cats. So I was specifically looking for a boy cat. So we went to get this ginger cat under the assumption that ginger cats were boys. How wrong was I? Even when I booked her into the vets and said, um, ginger cat, and I said it was a girl, they went, you mean she's ginger and white then? I went, no, she's completely ginger. So yeah. I, they do happen, but I think she's a little unusual, but she is. I love her. I don't know if she loves me, because she can be a little temperamental, but I love her a lot. Okay, so a nice quick layer of colour. It just takes away that fear of starting. And then burnt sienna. I'm going to just lightly think about her colouring. I'm not going to put the detail on yet. That can all come to a later date. So what I'll do is I'll put on all the wet washes under the eye and just let the paper and the paint do their job and create a lovely soft effect. So she does have stripes. She has dots and stripes. On her back, she goes down to stripes and then dots on her flanks. <coughs> but she's quite a nice cat most sometimes, not all the time. She has her own mind. I think that's the same with other cats. I do have two cats, but they don't actually like each other. They tolerate mostly <laughs> if they're not arguing with each other. This is the first time I've had cats that actually dislike each other. All the cats I've ever had have all always got on and introduced at different ages, different times. But mostly they were boys. These are two girls and, and they're not keen on each other. So her name is Bo, spelled the French way, meaning beautiful, because that's what she is. And I think she's about eight now. All I'm doing is I'm just thinking about her colouring, her stripes. Not putting them on fully yet. Don't need to. I can do that when the paint's dried. I'm just kind of plotting, which I do quite regularly with colour. So because she's ginger, but she's a tabby, they have on their face, they have an M. So just above the eyes, their patterning makes an M. I think the vet pointed this out to me. And you, you, you do look at it and you can see it's there. So I just make sure that whatever patterning I do put on her, I make sure I just show that 
she has that M on her um, pattern. So the rest of it I'm not overly bothered with. She's a ginger tabby cat. What I will do is when I get down to her nose, and she has sp specific freckles, which are starting to appear more as she gets a little older, I will, you know, just make sure I put the freckles in the right place. And it's those little details that help, you know, d distinguish the animal. Otherwise, she looks very similar to every other ginger cat. But those little key features, the freckles. My other cats are taught in, she has more specific patterns. The colours are much more specific, but she is a ginger cat. So the fur on her nose, just give myself a key. So the fur on her nose goes, it's either up or down on the nose, I've forgotten, someone did tell me. But tiny little hairs here. And then if you look on the picture, it curls into the nose here. And then curls round like that, so it goes down. The, no the hair goes down. If it curls round, it, the, the nose, these little ones here, obviously face downwards. And I know, I say, but I like to know these this information, it really does help when you're painting something. If you know that the hair goes down, then that's how I'll paint it. So all I've done to darken a little bit, still using the wet in wet, is to add a little bit of... What's difficult when you work with pans is you can't tell the colours. I think this is a a thalo blue of some sort. We do have the colour chart and I could work it out from the colour chart but this is much more of a thalo blue than the ultramarine. I know those two, that's ultramarine, French ultramarine and that's non-granulating ultramarine. So this must be, I think it's a thalo blue and it's just a little bit stronger than the ultramarine but again the burnt sienna and a blue, try different blues, Gives you a really nice either dark brown or grey. Just dropping. I still see it's still wet. So it's just meaning I'm able to drop colour in and it diffuses without being too harsh. And I did find I did spend quite a bit of time just working. Because it, all these colours are quite transparent. I did find that they tended to be a little bit more subtle. Plus, I'm not going to be using too many colours. It's pretty much going to be the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna. So therefore, I'm not going to make too much mud, even if I do have a lot of play with the work. So this is a plotting. I know it's going to disappear, watercolours tend to dry at half their strength. All I'm doing is just give myself some idea of fur direction. I can do all the real detail at the end when it's dried. So under this eye, I know it's light at the top, but she has a little rim of light under there. Bring that in, taking it up and over the masking tape, which is always a good thing to do. Don't just, I've seen people avoid going up to the masking tape. Um, go over it, that's what it's there for. It's, it helps you. Right, let me load this brush and get some darkness. I'm being very subtle. Using the tip of the brush just to create that fur effect. The areas here which have gone solid again, it's because it's still too wet. It will come back. I can go back over. And like I say, her muzzle 
is ginger, but when you take pictures of her, it does go very light. Let's darken under here. So all this colour is fabulous. It's given me this orange. I think they're called red in America, but an orange ginger colour for the cap. So this side, because it was very wet when I was putting the um, burnt sienna on, it's, it's faded. But it, what it's done is give me a lovely tone, a lovely colour. Now I can just, as it starts to dry, what I have to be careful is a part wet paper, and when I add paint on, it needs to be much stronger. If I did it wetter, this is when you get that um, cauliflower, or I can't remember what else they're called. Run back. Run back, that's a one word. So it's part dried, but I'm using a much stronger paint, much thicker. It's not a weak, wet paint. But then again, if I did want to create a run back, which are, are nice in, in some effects, it's really hard to do. I'm not overly looking, which is a bit naughty, but I'm not overly worried about her patterning, to be honest. Like I say, it's the freckles, it's those tiny little details that I'm familiar with, therefore all her stripes I'm not as familiar with. If she had some unique stripe or something that really made her stand out, then that's what I would concentrate on, but she's a ginger stripy cat. But I know her freckles, she has a couple at the top there, and they are coming out a little bit more Vet's not concerned. They're just freckles on her pink nose. Okay. So you can see how that's building up. And it's very soft at the moment. Again, let's go back in, see if I can. Great thing about these palettes is the colours are all here. I don't have to squeeze or choose what colours I'm going to use as much when I was planning because I just keep dipping my brush in and see which colour comes out so that's another great thing to use. I'm moving, when I'm painting I do tend to stand up because it helps me just move, I'm able to move and I know when I was at a show the other week I got everybody to stand up when we were painting the whiskers because you have that freedom, that movement, that if you're sitting down, you kind of, you're like this. If you stand up, you have that really nice movement. So just bringing back, see how easy that is. I think it's starting to come together. I hope you do as well. Um, it's a cross between working loosely and detailed. The eyes I'm going to concentrate on a little bit more. So just bringing about that M. That she has the ginger bits at the top. So you can see now the stronger colour coming through. But I'm not going to create mud. I'm not overly worried about creating mud because I'm just using a couple of colours. Mud happens when you put too many colours over the top of each other, too many different colours. Um, I'm just using the same colours. All I'm doing is creating tonal values of the same colour. That's okay. Right. While this is wet, I'm going to pick up one of these reds. I think this is possibly Scarlet Lake because that's quinacridone. I should have remembered all 14 colours, but I haven't. I can guess which ones they are. 
but that's the same with any pan. On the side of these, I think I can pop this one out, you do have the numbers. So that's really useful for when you want to reorder. So a 710, you can reorder Payne's Grey, I think that one will be. That's just because I know my colours. Um, but when they're sat in a pan like this, I can't remember which ones are. So the nose, and this might bleed a little into the fur, but I'm not overly bothered. It's a bit too pink. So damping off my brush and just using the colour I've got on here. Now actually looking at the image inside her nose, though it is going to be the darkest, she's actually got a very light nose all the way through. So even inside here, it's still quite pink. Her fur's white under here, but just this little lip here, it's a bit pink. see what I could do. I might go to a smaller brush because I've got the full range so why not use it. I'm just going to pick up so these imitation sable great for water holding properties. I'm just going to see if I can bring out the detail on her nose. Not worried about any highlights yet. I'm going to do all that at the end. Like I say, there's lots of way to create highlights and I've used all of them at some time or another. But at the moment, I'm actually preferring to um, finish off with either a pen and I've got a selection of pens because all of them work, but sometimes it's just seeing which one works with the painting you're using. Nice, a bit strong. So just bringing out the detail around her nose. And like I say here, looks very light, but she is actually ginger. Okay, under her chin. I don't want that too strong. I want it very light, but I want an indication of colour. A bit of colour here. I'm just looking at where I feel I need colour. And if I put too much on like I did there, it's so easy just to move. What I'm going to do, because I tend to forget the whiskers, so you're always looking at it and you're thinking, there's something I'm missing. And it usually is, because I have I've forgotten to put the whiskers on. So they have, with her, I can see little darker areas where the whiskers go. Just dot here. And because that side is still wet, you get quite a nice texture. So let's see. Still a little wet here, but maybe... It's too dry, so I'll wet it because I want it a little more diffused. And Saunders water is, is great for this very wet technique. So a little bit there, here. So it's a lot softer diffused because it's a bit wet. It actually goes round, make sure I get the roundness. Soften it. I do know it's going to dry less. What I might do is show you the rake brush. So this is fabulous for grasses, um, hair, but it's also good for just putting on those lovely hair details. So this is the silver range, this is a synthetic brush. The same as the others which are synthetic, but this is much stiffer bristles. But look how easy it is to 
I'm keeping it quite dry. Look how easy it is to bring out details. What I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load it and then dry off the tips. So by loading, I've loaded up the belly and it should now drag down to the um, longer hairs. Just trying to keep some areas dry. Get that lovely textures. I love tools which actually do the job for you. It just makes it so much easier. Use the edge just to get a little bit more. And these highlights are just going to be, that's cool, that's really, I'll bring that down. Because if I, if I find I've, I, I don't like too much detail, I can take it back. That's the great thing, you don't have to keep everything. You can always take it back, especially with a couple of colours. Right, load up, need to be stronger here. Still a little wet, I can feel it's fizzing a bit. Take some colour down. Just making it easy using the right brush. So she has a fuzzy chin. So I'm just just darkening a little bit. Orange enough down here. Stand back. Look at areas that may be too harsh. Okay, I think I'm going to let that dry. So we'll have a short break. I've got a chance to blast it with a hairdryer and then I can start and look at detail, which I don't want to do until the uh, paper's dry. So join me in a minute. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage, and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles, and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started, as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration for the magazines, to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking, just join, they'll love it. Welcome back. So I've just blasted this with hairdryer. It's not fully dry, so normally I'd take a little bit more time, but it was a short interval. So I'm going to concentrate on the eyes now. The rest of the detail I can pick up in a minute, but I'm just going to concentrate on it. I'm going to, this is your lemon yellow. I'm going to drop it into the whole of the eye, apart from the Iris. 
And the reason, again, I'm using the lemon as a whole is I want to create a wet in wet surface just so I can drop the colours in. Have a look. I'm going to do one eye at a time. So now I want a bit of that phthalo. Drop it in. So blue and yellow make green. But I'm not going to mix it. I'm just going to add it. So it mixes on the page. I'm not... I do like to use a mixed green. But with this, I like to see the colours mix. And I can add more yellow. I can alter and manipulate. So she has fabulous green eyes. While it's still wet, I'm going to see if I can create some of these lines that you get in the eye. You'll see I'm still using quite a, a large brush for this bit because you can get such a fabulous tip. No ring. I don't need to change. I find sometimes if you use such a small brush, you tend to get very obsessed. And I, when I'm teaching a workshop, I don't put out the small brushes because people will just first naturally go towards that small brush. And sometimes you just can't get the work or the marks that you, you get from a much larger brush, you end up a lot of brush marks when you don't need to. So let's use some of the ultramarine, some lemon, get it done. So I'm going to build up colours. At the moment it's wet in wet. I don't like that, so I'll take it back. I'm not put the highlights in yet. I can do that. And the dark areas, again, I can strengthen them and take back gradually, but just letting the paper do its own thing with these fabulous colours. So again, around her eye, she does have dark areas, but she's also quite pink still. So she has light. Might leave that. It could be a little bit too strong. So just see if I can dab back. I do know it's going to lighten, so I'm not going to fiddle. So the pink areas. So yes, she has dark areas around her, but she's also quite pink. So I'm going to put the pink on now and I'll come back and fill in the darkest here. Her eyes quite pink there. I've lost the shape, but I can come back. And you'll notice I'm not totally filling in areas. I'm leaving um, some areas of outline. That's because I do know that I'm going to get some colour running into each other because it's still a bit wet. The, this is where I'm, I would focus and concentrate a little bit more. So I'll let that dry because then I can go back in. So in again with the yellow. I know this eye is going to be a lot more in shadow but I'm going to start the same way. Again, no highlights yet. I could have left them, I could have painted around them. But I'm going to put them on at the end. So this is going to be quite... I don't know why that's quite as big as it is, but I can change it. All this I can alter and change. Same techniques. But in the end it's going to be much, much darker. But if you start with the same colours, need to fill it up. 
fiddle with that one too much in with the pink. Now I think I've made this quite big. I don't need to have it as big. Pink. Going to the bigger one. Okay. And the it, hair goes down there. So. Like I say, the, my main focus is going to be the eyes and getting the eyes that colour I'm looking for. So they're going to be a little bit more detailed and controlled, but I need to let them dry. So the nose, I'm going to create a, my own grey the thalo blue and the burnt bruises mixing to create your own grey. I do have the black and I will go into it but I think it's nicer to this is what I'm going to think about under the nose here is for her fairly dark but she's still quite pink so I need to be a little bit more subtle and I would do it if I was painting an animal with a much darker nose. You don't always get to see the pinkness come through, but it's usually this is the darkest, really the darkest area on the face. But it's not quite so with her because her nose is so light. A little. Again, just look at a general shape of an animal's nose, a cat's nose, a dog's nose. See how they differ. See how you know, they're constructed. So the nose and go into the lip bit here and across the they have a little heart shape. And you'll see that also in tigers and other cats. They have that shape. Whereas the dog's is often domed. A bit more colour. I'm dotting around because I need areas to dry so I can add that sharp detail and sharp detail is only able to be achieved with a dry not covering the whole area just picking up pink bits here pink bits Again, I know it dries, so I'm not overly concerned about the strength. Let's see if I can drop in. I'm going to use the black. Oh, that's Payne's grey, actually. Check. Might be black. Let's see if I can drop in. Last time I did this because it was still too wet. It just fizzed, fizzed like this, but it might give me. So I've got quite a big freckle here couple here, one, two, there's another one here, so that's lost its intensity, let's go back in, just, I don't want to Go around and outline everything in the black. Let me just check. This is black, I'm sure it is. So I'm going to go into the eye now. Hopefully it's dry enough. If it's not, I will get some bleeding in. But uh, to be honest, I don't mind so much. Now that's just about dry. So looking at the shape, go rounded here comes around now because she's quite oh, lost me tissue she's quite light so her skin it must be all to do with her skin underneath is quite light this is not as harsh I 
as some cuts. We've still got that little bit of pink. Little bit of bleed, not overly concerned. This is why you spend your time and let things dry. I'm going to go round. And you can see by just adding that shape, making sure you get your shape right, it just starts to make things ping. Still not got enough shadow in the eye, but I can do that. Like I say, these colours are all quite transparent, so I have to think about the strength I'm adding. Okay. It has a dark area here, but still showing a little bit of pink. Again, around the eye here, still showing that little bit of pink. It's not very pink, so I need to take it back a little bit, lift out. And once it dries, I can go back in and add any detail that I think I might have not given enough to. I know under the eye is going to get dark, but I can do that. So just looking at the shapes. So actually, this bit of her eye, she's quite light. So I'm not going to lose the pinkness of this. I'll shade it. But now I'm going to look back and see where it really is dark and black here and then back in here and I'm going to do a glaze of dark which I'm not getting from the other colours just add that extra bit of darkness that she has just under here in the eye Again, I'm going to put the highlights on later and it should be dry enough for me to be able to put the iris in. Now, I've put the colour down the middle because I'm kind of testing to see whether it is dry enough. I don't mind a little bit of bleed. That's actually sometimes a little quite nice. It makes it a little bit more textural. and the eye is quite dark here because it's round. And you can see how that's faded again. Too dark, wet brush. I can, I'll let that go because it will dry. So, again, with this eye, let's go in with the black. She's, this is the dark eye, this is the eye that I think I've got too much pink showing, so I need to alter that a little bit. Might open her eye. She does this, she smiles at you. She blinks her eyes, apparently that's smiling. It's her way of showing affection. She does like a food, that's one thing she does like. But they blink at you. You're supposed to be able to blink at them and they blink back at you and that's kind of like a smile. So this is much darker. I'm going to add some blue. I have no plan of colour. It just I just kind of sometimes feel what it needs, which is not easy to demonstrate. It's just a kind of a 
an instinct. I kind of know when I need a colour. Let's see if I can strengthen this. Might be it needs all to dry. So eyes that shape. She has kind of freckles. Oops, oops. Freckles in the, the corners of her eyes. I think that's working. Just darken this. And I might let that dry, but then go in and darken. So, dark, talking about darkening. So, burnt umber, more burnt umber, and some phthalo blue. I'm making a very dark brown because here so under the eye she's a lot darker coming round yeah I've still not done the highlights I will do those just taking it down the burnt sienna colour is actually very opaque so you can see how light it is now, I'm going to do those little details that I need just to bring out that extra bit of... I don't want to put too much detail. I like the mix of detail versus looseness, but just swap into a bigger brush, fiddling too much. See, with a bigger brush you can load with colour. I'm not also, I'm being quite careful not to lose some of the quality I've got underneath as well. This is too light for a ginger cap. Lighten that. Need to be darker across the here. Again, take it up and over. Because it, you're layering, the colours underneath still stay. So the next layer you create, it doesn't disappear. It just adds another layer on and they stay as they are and they just darken you can now see I'm just starting to think about she does need a little bit I was I'm too light for me I like it much stronger using the brush She has the same kind of dark. I've not worked on this side as much as maybe I should have done. I do need to darken it down. I can do that with a glaze. So a glaze of the darker, because this is the area in shadow. And it Glazing is applying a very thin layer of colour. You can see how that's just darkened. Because that eye's quite dark, I want it to be represented in this side of the face being that little bit darker, including the nose. Again, just glazing, thinking about shadowing under this eye. Hair comes down here. You've noticed that. This gives you that dark. Again, I've still not done that light. Just thinking about tonal values at the moment. It's too light in the middle there. Don't want it. 
I did put those black stripes on, but that doesn't really matter. I'm not overly bothered. It's all part of the painting process. Dry brush. Step back. Muzzles. Still a bit light. I can. Let's see if I can get any more detail down here. So normally what I'll do is I'll just keep working until I feel I've got the right amount of detail. But I don't think you need to watch me keep doing because I think it's it's got a good and like I've said before, because I'm only using a few colours, quite like that splodge there, it's darkened that as well. Because I'm only using a few colours, I'm not going to get it too muddy. So when I start to introduce lots of colour, you know, it needs to be more ginger here. Take it up and over the... Because you're thinking of the whole... When you're putting it in the clock face, you're thinking of the whole... What's it going to look like with the... I'm not going to do much more because I'm going to start to overthink. So, what can I do? I can bring back the eye. Now, there's lots of ways to do it. There's the white in here, but I, I'm going to use it a little bit, but I didn't think, find it... I couldn't get it as opaque as I wanted it, but it does give a little bit of light. Depends how clean my brush is. That's one thing with pans is it's really easy to contaminate, especially me, who doesn't clean their brushes as well. Now you'll see this tends to disappear because it's not giving me that fully opaque colour I want. So here, I'll just do a little dot in here and I don't know if it's too dry. It's not dry enough, sorry. Just put in those little bits of detail. So this is a Posca pen. I do love a Posca pen. It's really opaque white. And as you're working, you will pick up and think that's not strong enough. She needs a little bit more pink. This may not be the same colour as you see in your photo, but when you're painting, this is where you can decide what works and what doesn't. She didn't have enough colour in her nose for me. but So I could use the black pen as well to really help bring out some of the detail. So now this should be opaque. Let's see if I can catch a little bit of a line there. So here I'm just catching a line. Oops. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. But that's why I have a tissue in my hand. Leave it. Actually, I quite like that bit. Oh, it's got a bit blobby because I've primed it and I've primed it probably a bit too keenly. It probably didn't need priming. It was all ready to go. Catch the light catches around the inside of her eye. How's that looking? I can't, like I say, I can't always see it in this light. So a lot of it is I'm having to guess what you can see. The key thing is, is be quite careful. So let's use the... To bring out... Because her hair goes over her eye. And you see how it's really nice and faded on... It's not as harsh. Just bring out some of those details. Because even though she is ginger, her fur 
if you look at it, it has some really nice little white flecks. Whiskers. Remind me to put whiskers on because I will forget. I was, I was primed. You were primed to do primed my whiskers. So she has little hair here. It's these little details that just sometimes brings it brings it all together. I'm not because I could just keep going. I don't need to do anything on there. I think that's working. I know. I know. It's just why I, I didn't panic too much. I'm always splattering and dropping. It's nothing new for me. I, I'm a bit careless when it comes that way, but I have to learn to live with what, what I do. That's why I don't get overly concerned. Luckily, it wasn't green. That would have been a little bit too difficult to explain. Darken him. So I'm going to stop because all I'll keep doing is I can see details. So whiskers. I'm just whiskers. Don't whiskers. Don't the whiskers. whiskers. Now whiskers. We have a whisker brush for that, which is a rigger. Now I know she has some dark whiskers and some light whiskers. So I'm going to use the rigger and load it. This is when you stand up. And again, because I'm just doing a few dark ones because not all of them, and I'm getting them broken because I can always go in with the white and add some more. And she has lots of little white whiskers around here. Make sure when you do whiskers that they go off and over the edge. You could count and be really precise and count the number of whiskers, but I'm not going to. It's put some dots in her nose, put some dots around the outside here, which is why I needed a little bit more colour. She has some whiskers coming off here. can't see those so much so what I might do is just slightly oops, too much just gives you that little bit of um, one more thing I can see she's not got enough it's not the right brush she's not got enough detail distinguishing her mouth And that can be just quite subtle, but I just could see there wasn't enough there to give you a, an indication of where her mouth is. Okay, that's much better for me. That's just kind of giving her that mouth area. Softening it. That's it, I'm finished. Anita? Yes. Uh, Matthew in the chat is asking uh, what size the paper and the uh, clock are overall. It doesn't say on the product page. So no. Can you I hold it up and so that we can sort of see a. The, yeah, I think the paper is 24.5 times 24.5 because I had to measure it um, square, but the clock is that big. So I know that's 24.24, but you've got a really nice broad border and then the box frame. So this is a box frame. Um, putting the hands on, they're, they're quite delicate. They're not, they're not breakable delicate, but they slightly bend if you're hand-fisted like I am. So you just put them on, and what I was using was a palette knife just to make sure that they weren't catching with each other. When they're flat down like this, they may catch, but
that once it sits up, they kind of align themselves straight. So they actually pop on. The first one pops on, the second one pops on, and the top one finishes it. So I'm just seeing if this will catch. It's make no, it's just gone across it. But that's also because it's laying down. Once it's sitting up like that, is that which way? Yeah. That way. It, it works. And I'll show you the back because it is a really nice, well-made frame. Handmade by Ricky. I've put the battery in. Don't hang it by this because it's quite heavy. So they've got the um, hanging kit already in. And I think that makes a really nice picture for me because it's my cat. But you think of all the other things you can do in there and how that would look fabulous on people's wall. Coming up for Christmas, that's why I'm starting in November. As much as I am reluctant to do so, sometimes if you, you're making something for someone, you need to be ahead. So I think my next um, demonstrations will all be keyed up to things that you can do f as gifts for people. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me see what it looks like when I reveal. Yeah, it was only a tiny border. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> but that's enough to... When I didn't tape it down, it didn't get as buckled. But I think it's because it's still wet. Saunders Waterford is fabulous for wetting wet techniques. And it allows you to get a really wet paper. So very few colours used, as always. But they were... I could walk away, come back to it, reevaluate. So... Oh. oh, well, you just moved it now. No, I was going to say, so hole through there. So also when you're doing this, you need to plan where's the best place for the hole. Do I offset things or put it right in the middle? Um, and I hope you enjoyed that. So just to recap, using the SAA imitation sable brushes, new range of brushes, all synthetic, but uh, replicate the fabulous quality of a sable. The SAA pans, having all your colours in one area just to be able to decide what colour you like instead of having to choose and squeeze um, the tubes. And then I had an array of white pens. All work pretty well. I just chose that Posca. Um, always a useful thing to have with a watercolour or any medium that you just want to be able to add that extra bit of highlight um, that you can't get with a paint. So I hope you enjoyed that and join me next week for another live demonstration.